Hello and welcome to the OM Genomics Show. I'm Maria Nadestad, and today I'm going to show you how to make a bash script. This is either on Mac or Linux, and I'm going to take you through how to edit this file to actually start making the script, how to make sure it runs in bash, how to make it executable, how to let the user provide input variables, and what to do if the user doesn't give you a value such as either throw an error or have a default ready to substitute for the user's value. So let's hop over to bash and make the script on the command line. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a file. And I'm just going to use Nano, which is available on many platforms, though there's also Vim. And if we say Nano my script, it's going to make a new file called my script and open it for us. And then what we need to do to make this a bash script is at the very top, you need to put something called a shebang line. And that refers to hashtag, which is the sh, and then bang, which is the exclamation point. So that's shipping. And then we put this little line right here, which is gonna find the bash script, or it's gonna find the bash program on your computer. You can also use different things like um, shipping bin slash bash if you have one, but the nice thing about this line is that it's very portable, so basically on any Linux or Unix system, it'll find the first bash program that's listed in your path. All right, so that's the first line, and that always needs to be the first line when you're making a bash script so that it actually knows what kind of code this is. Now, the next thing we do is we do whatever the content is of the script that you're writing. So I'm just going to make a little test thing where I echo hello. And echo means basically print out in bash. All right, so that's it for this script so far. We're going to keep adding to it, but this is the first step. So now in order to get out of nano, which is our text editor, we do control X and you can see it down here. So control X and we want to save. So we so we hit Y and enter. Okay, so I'm just going to ls and see that our script is here. Now, if we look at our script, say less my script, then we can see what's inside of it and it looks good. Now, let's make the script executable so we can actually run it. So in order to make something executable, we have to do something called change the permissions on the script. And that's using chmod. Now, if we do plus X, that's going to add executability to our script. And there's multiple different things you can do here, but chmod plus X is basically the only one that I use consistently. It's the most common one that I use. And that's what you need in order to make a script executable. Of course, you know you can just tab complete to get the rest of my script. And then if we hit enter, it doesn't complain, so we can assume that it has worked. And let's try to actually run the script now. So because the script is in this folder and we haven't added it to our path, we can just do this dot slash and then my script. Now, if you hit enter, you should get hello. So that means that it just ran our script. Yay, that was the first part. Very nice. So now all we have to do is, well, that can be everything. If all you wanted to do is print hello, then we're done but I'll show you how to do some of the more common things that we need. Let's talk about how to add a variable. So let's go back in and edit our script. And I'm going to add a place where we take a variable. So let's say that we want to say hello to somebody. Name equals dollar sign. And then one refers to the first input. So that's like the first column in awk as well. And then if we put a question mark, that'll give us what happens if nothing is entered. So I'll show you how this works, but let's just type it out for now. No name given. So error, no name given. And then we need to use our variable. So I can say hello name. So a few important things here. When you're doing a variable like this, you have to make sure there's no spaces. You have to make sure that the variable name is the same here 
in here. So both name, all uppercase, that's just what I do for bash variables. I keep them uppercase so that I can tell them apart from everything else because it can get kind of confusing otherwise. And then this part basically says that we have a variable that is column one or is the first input and this assigns it, so this assigns it to name. So make sure you have no spaces here. And then in order to use the variable, we use the dollar sign here. And that means substitute the value of name instead of just the word name. So when you put a dollar sign in front of a variable, that's how you can use it. But when you're setting it, you don't use the dollar sign in front. Okay. So I hope that's relatively clear, but let's take a look at what this does. So we go control X again, press Y and enter. Okay, so now let's run my script again. And this time we're not gonna put any variables. Let's see what happens. So it says error no name given, and it says it's on line three. So if you wanna go in and look at your script again, you can see what line was it that I had an error on but we know that the error exists because I didn't give it a name. So let's pick Tom, my script Tom. So it should say, hello, Tom. Yay, okay, we actually managed to insert a variable here. Now, I'll also show you how to do a second variable that is optional. So let's go back in and edit my script, nano my script. Let's add a second variable here. So I'm gonna say name two, and I'll make it column two. And instead of putting a question mark and saying what the error should be if it, nothing is provided, then I'll say colon dash or colon minus. And that allows us to give a default value for that variable. Oh, and I need to make sure to put that in front. So we want the value of this expression, basically. So what this says is that name two becomes the second input. And if the second input is not provided, then make it friend instead. And so if I go over here and I just go name two, and I'll say and in between, so it's hello, Tom and friend, or hello, Tom and Jerry. And if we then go, oh yeah, so I went control X, Y, enter, and let's run my script again. If we don't give a first name, then we get an error. If we give a first name, it'll say hello, Tom and friend. And if I give it a second name, it'll say hello, Tom and Jerry. So that's how you can use defaults. And that's it for this time. That should allow you to get started writing a basic bash script throwing an error if the user doesn't give you the file name that you're going to read or something like that. And you can do all sorts of things this way. Thank you so much for watching the OM Genomics show. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please like it here on YouTube and that'll help other people find this video. And if you're interested in more bioinformatics content, I have a weekly email series where I email you whenever a video like this one comes out. And that's over at omgenomics.com slash subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time on the OM Genomics show.